this way to bear country. You'll know when you're there. As soon as you enter, you'll feel like a bear. A great grizzly bear. A Berenstain bear. We are the Berenstain Bears. Mama. Papa. Sister. Brother. We appreciate each other. We live in a split level tree. Mama, Papa, Sister, and me. Snuggest buds in a split level more Berenstain Bears. Factual, factual. Big Bob Bear. Rabbit Ralph. Oh, uh -huh. hey, honey butter. I'm the mayor. And lots, lots more. Bears galore. You may think that this starts our show. Well, it does. <laughs> and the fourth dimension, well, the 17th dimension is so far out that you can't reach it even if you go at the speed of light. Well, thrill, thrill, thrill. Hey, brother, let's go out and do stuff. Maybe pick some berries. Don't think so, sis. I'm really into this dinosaur. You know, when you stop to think, this guy's been extinct for 14 million years. Well, if you'd rather fool around with some dinosaur that's been stink for 14 million years. Extinct. Stinked extinct. However you say it, I think it smells. I don't suppose you'd want to go over to the village green and play a little soccer? Gee, sis, I... I didn't think so. That brother of mine, what's gotten into him? He never wants to do anything anymore. It seems to me your brother is doing quite a lot. Yeah, but he never wants to go out. It's just a phase he's going through. He's becoming an introvert like his dad. You? An introvert? <laughs> Why, you're beer country's champion extrovert. Introvert? Extrovert? What's all that mean? Uh, well, you see, uh, trovert means, uh, uh, means person, and an introvert is a uh, person that uh, likes to stay in. And X means something you used to do, like an ex actor or an ex teacher. So an extrovert is somebody that used to be an introvert. It's as simple as that. Thanks, Papa. Anytime, sweetie, anytime. <sighs> well, I'm ready to go over to the village green and play a little soccer. G great! Flowers. Hi, Mr. Painter. Hello there. Howdy. How is it going? Howdy. Going fine. Sister, how come you know all these bears? Huh? I don't know them. You don't? You mean they're all strangers? Of course. Hi, Mr. Jogger. Hi, Cub. Well, come on, brother. Let's get over to the village green. What's your feeding the pigeons? Oh, it's uh, my own special recipe. It's mostly corn, some rice, and for a special treat, a little brown sugar. Sounds delicious. Really, sister? You're going to have to stop that. Stop what? Talking to strangers. It's just not a good idea. What's the big deal? Why shouldn't I talk to strangers? Is there some harm in it? Is there something wrong with strangers? Hmm. 
Those aren't questions for our brother. Those are questions for a mama or a papa. Now, Sister Bear, I'm really glad you asked these questions. They're very important questions. The reason that you should never talk to a stranger and never, ever take presents from a stranger and never, ever, ever go anywhere with a stranger is that it's dangerous. Oh, dear. I do hope Papa can tell Sister about strangers without making everything scary. What's dangerous about it, Papa? What can happen? All sorts of things. Here, let's look at the newspaper. See right there? Stranger bothers cub. Huh. Here's another. Missing cub found. Gee. And another. Chief Grizzly questions stranger. Newspapers full of reasons why you shouldn't talk to strangers. So remember, sweetie, never talk to a stranger. Never, ever take presents from a stranger. And never, ever, ever go anywhere with a stranger. Now, I hope you're paying attention to all this, brother. Yes, Papa. <laughs> Good night, sweetie. Good night, Papa. Good night, dear. Night, Mama. Strange, strange, strange. Missing, missing, missing. Police, police, police. See right there? Stranger bothers cub. Missing cub found. Chief Grizzly questions stranger. Strange, strange, strange. Missing, missing, missing. Strange, strange, strange. Oh. Hey, sis, after breakfast, want to go over to the green and fool around like yesterday? Maybe play a little frisbee. Huh? What'd you say? I said, after breakfast, want to go over to the green and fool around. Maybe play a little frisbee. <laughs> breakfast. Mama, is it okay for us to go over to the green for a while? I suppose so. Tell you what, I'll be driving to the farmer's market to get some apples. I'll pick you up on the way home. Terrific! Come on, sister. Come on, sister. Sure, let's go. And now my behind the back boomeranger. Okay, now, sis, a little mustard. Yikes. Well, how are things at the village green today? Okay, I guess. But there are so many strangers. You know, what Papa told you about strangers was quite right. It's not a good idea to talk to strangers or accept presents or rides from them. I know, Mama. But that doesn't mean all strangers are bad. Why, chances are there wasn't a single person on that green that would hurt a fly, much less a fine little cub like you. The trouble is, well, it's like this barrel of apples. There's an old saying that goes, there'll always be a couple of bad apples in every barrel. That's the way it is with strangers. Cubs have to be careful because of the few bad apples. Look, I found one. It's all bumpy and has a funny shape. Well, it certainly is strange looking, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Hey, inside it's perfect. Now here's one that looks fine on the outside. Yeah. Hey, what's up? A bad apple. Double yuck! Hey, I'm going over to the meadow to fly my new plane. Want to come? Sure. I can pick some wildflowers. Wow! Terrific! 
you've got some high flyer there. Wow, really great. Well, if you've got enough flowers, we can head for home. Fine. Hold it. Wow, what a beauty. It's a radio control job. Wait a sec, sis. I want to watch. Yeah, it's radio controlled, all right. Boy, it sure is a beauty. Brother talking to a stranger? I don't care how big and beautiful his radio control job is. That's what he is, a stranger. I'm going to send it up and follow it in the car. You want to come along? Wow, can I? Don't you dare! Brother talk to a stranger. Brother talk to a stranger. But it was a big orange and green radio control job. That doesn't matter. We have rules about strangers, and they're important. We have rules about tattletales, too. Sister wasn't tattling. Tattling is telling just to be mean. Sister was telling because she loved you and she was worried. Do you think that guy was a bad apple? Probably not. That's right. But you have to be careful just in case. Well, anyway, thanks for looking out for me. Anytime. <laughs> Most time. I should hope so. For the last seven days, your papa has been a caution to live with. Ever since he stored that batch of boysenberry honey in the cellar, it's all he thinks about. How come he have to wait seven days, papa? And why do you have to keep it in the cellar? That's the way it is with boysenberry honey. <sighs> it has to age for exactly seven days in a cool, dry place to reach its full peak of delicious flavor. Time! Oh, boy, have I been dreaming about this. No one in bear country loves honey better than Papa, especially boysenberry honey. No! Gone! My boysenberry honey! Stolen! Who? I'd say this is a case for the bear detectives. Right. Better signal Cousin Freddy. Pronto. What's all the commotion? Honey theft is the lowest crime known to bears. This calls for my expert sniffer hound, Snuff. A clue! It's some fur! And look, a shred of red and yellow striped cloth. Of course, clues, scientific detection. This calls for cold, calculating detection by the world's greatest detective, yours truly, Papa Q Bear. Maybe you should ask Mr. Owl to help. He's on neighborhood town watch. No, this isn't a case for amateurs. Besides, I wouldn't want to wake him. He works nights, you know. Hmm, what's this? Looks like some kind of wax. I'll put it with our other clues. Wonder if they mean anything. To my trained eye, they mean everything. Hmm. Take this fur, for instance. Bear fur, of course. Moreover, criminal bear fur. I can tell by the blunt hair shaft. Red and yellow. A flashy dresser, no doubt. And the wax. Hmm, wax, wax. Wax! Of course. Wax is commonly used by criminals to make impressions of locks, to make illegal keys. Looks like ordinary bear fur to me. The colors don't seem that flashy. And as for using wax to make a key, well, Unc, um, the cellar has no lock. Picky, picky, picky. Besides, we haven't even unleashed our biggest and best weapon, the magnificent nose of our sniffer hound, Snuff. That's it. Load up your mighty nostrils. But, Unc! Whoa! Whoa! Papa!
<laughs> He's hot on the boysenberry trail. But, Papa, that's Madame Lucette's fashion boutique. Don't be fooled. It's clearly a front for a criminal ring. <laughs> It's for Mrs. Bunny Pot's birthday. I, I, I mean, uh, uh, Honey Pot's birthday. Uh, uh, and I want your finest stench, uh, smell, uh, uh, perfume. <laughs> oh, the boysenberry. He has such a charming, fruity air. Aha! The incriminating fragrance of boysenberries. Grab them, Snow! <laughs> It's a little extreme. <laughs> Be you! Extreme problems require extreme solutions. And it just might work. <laughs> They'll be out pretty soon. Poor Papa and Snuff. Mm, most refreshing. <laughs> Yes, somewhere in this town beats a criminal heart. Papa, it's just Bear Town. And the bears here are all our neighbors. Young, yeah, the crook could be anybody. A very astute observation, nephew. It could be anybody. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. The candlestick maker, of course. The mysterious wax. We've got our crook. Careful now, Snuff. He could be desperate. <laughs> Old Mr. Grizzlefelder, the candlestick maker? He wouldn't take a wild flower from the public park. Mr. Grizzlefelder is over 80 years old. Exactly. He's been planning this crime for years. Come on, Snuff. Let's get him. Okay, you cover the front. Me and the nose will sneak around and attack from the rear. It's quiet. Too quiet. All right, Grizzlefelder, you scurvy honey thief. I'm gonna count three, then we're coming in. One, two... Oh, no! Papa, wait! Three! Catcher and snuff! Where'd Papa go? The Grizzlefelder gang's attacking us! Uh, no! What a mess! <laughs> this on the front door. Gone fishing. Be back a week from Tuesday. So you see, he couldn't have stolen your honey. You slippery old codger. Well, he's still on my suspect list, so tell him he's not to leave town. <sighs> Boy, that was some job straightening up Grizzlefelder's shop. <laughs> Go, snuff, go! Aha! <laughs> uh -huh, a perfect hideout. And the red and yellow clue. We're up against the cleverest kind of criminal. A female mastermind. Aha! Uh -huh. Cherchez la femme, snuff. That's Greek for find the woman. Papa, wait! Shh! Can't you see I'm closing in on a vicious criminal? But this is Grizzly Grand's house. It wouldn't matter to me if it were my own mother. Now, Snuff! Whoa! But, Papa, it is your mother. Oh, hi, Gran. Sakes alive, what got into you, Papa Cuber? It's a long story. I'm listening. And Papa's been chasing all over town. Trouble with you, Papa, is you're getting weak-minded. Here, you need some of my boysenberry tart to sprinkle in your mind. And as for that honey thief, let me have a look in my crystal ball. It's coming through bright and clear. The honey thief is very near. The honey was taken by the stealthy hand of the greatest honey lover in all the land. Well, be off with you now. Hmm. Papa sure is depressed. What do you expect? He failed to solve the case. Worse than that, he lost his status as Bear Country's greatest honey lover. Uh, my reputation.
reputation is ruined. Hey, being number two isn't that bad, Unc. You're a good cub, Freddy. Huh? Snuff? What is it, Snuff? What in blue blazes? Papa, those are your pajamas. Why, yeah, uh, uh, they are. Red and yellow pajamas. Your pajama tops are sticky with honey. Boysenberry honey. Come to think of it, this fur looks an awful lot like yours. Me? Are you accusing me of stealing my own honey? May I intrude? Absolutely, Mr. Owl. Well, as you know, I'm on the town watch night shift. And around midnight, for the past seven nights, I've noticed Papa Bear coming out in his pajamas. The red and yellow pajamas! Carrying a candle. That explains the mysterious wax. Every night he'd go into the cellar. Uh-huh. Papa's fur. A little later, he'd come out, lick in his lips, and go back into the treehouse. Well, since the honey belonged to Papa, and since it's not a good idea to awaken a sleepwalker... Papa didn't steal the honey. He was just sleepwalking. Uh, does that mean I'm innocent? Of course. And Mr. Owl certainly deserves our thanks. No problem. All in a night nice work. Well, I offer congratulations on two counts. One, because we solved the case. And two, because I kept my title as Bear Country's number one honey lover. <laughs> <laughs>